cool. So, most of you might be thinking, why did I buy uh, an MX-5? Some of you are mostly thinking, he made the right choice. It will depend, it will, it will change for each person. Some people agree with these cars, some people don't. Let me explain. So, my car history, if you haven't heard it in the other videos, I go something along the lines of this. I had a classic Mini to begin with. Now, that was my first car. That was um, the first car I ever bought. It was really hard to get insured. And of course, I was looking at prices of about, say, £3,800 was the lowest quote I got on a Corsa at the age of 18. Um, and they were things like one litre Corsas. So my dad suggested to me, get a classic Mini, um, see what opportunity there is to get something like classic car insurance hopefully the price will go down and and pretty much from there the price did reduce um it went down to about 1200 pounds for my first insurance which i was pretty happy with i then moved on to the mini r53 now the reason behind that is because for me i think they were the best looking mini in terms of modification i had this crazy idea to basically make sure that i could make the, the new Mini and the Classic Mini look the same. If you've ever owned a Classic Mini, you will know that they are potentially one of the best cars to drive. Now, don't get me wrong, I haven't driven ridiculously priced sports cars and Porsches. Moved on to the R53. Um, the R53 is the supercharged Cooper S. Um, and, oh my, like, for, for, from going from, say, about a, a 90 brake horsepower, uh, classic Mini to 100, I think it's like 69 brake horsepower factory um, a Mini R53 Cooper S. Um, yeah, there was a big difference. So for me, that was a lot of fun to drive, but I think it was more based on speed. They are a brilliant car, um, but uh, the one thing that I didn't realise is every time that I wanted to do a modification to the car, something would go wrong. So um, I lost a lot of money with the R53. I was buying the car for £3,000. I then ended up spending about £2,000. 200 pound on a brand new engine to be fitted and the car to be delivered back to me i don't think i know a single mini owner who isn't on a second engine easily pumped a good say including the price of the car good six thousand pound into the car and it looked no different to the day that i bought it and as well from going from a classic mini to a new mini one thing that you will realize is you can't do stuff to normal day cars now like modifying a mini is or modifying a mini is one of the hardest things that you will come across uh, BMW make it physically impossible for you to really work on it and um, there's a lot of things that you've got to take off before you can put one new thing on um, it's just a lot of hassle the classic mini for me I rewired it um, twice um, I just due to the fact that I, I burnt a loom out myself but I was able to rewire my whole car uh, obviously they don't run an ECU or well, my one didn't run an ECU it was too old um, and there's a lot of things to the car which make it special i.e. I can modify the car for a cheap price um, and that's what Broke Boys is all about so that leads me on to the MX-5 which I've got now and the reason that I chose it so the reason I chose the MX-5 is because I was looking at these cars for a while I've never had something real well and I wanted something which was enjoyable since having this car I've had it for about a week now um, and I'm telling you now, it comes very, very close to the driving experience of a classic Mini. Um, what I mean by that is, no, it doesn't handle in the same way. It does stick very well into corners. Um, obviously, you do get a bit of rear end wiggle kind of thing, but it's it's one of them cars where it's gone back to basics. I can enjoy it again. And if I'm completely honest with you, no, it doesn't have the power, but am I enjoying this more than my R53 Mini? Yes, a lot more, a lot more. Bought this car for £2,000. Um, it is very stock, very standard, very kind of out the factory finish how it would have come out. Um, just the only thing about it is the bodywork is pretty much immaculate. This thing doesn't have a speck of surface rust. And as well, um, the first thing that I did when buying this was thought to myself, if anything does go wrong, what is the worst case scenario? I'm going to potentially need to buy myself another engine. Um, let's, let's just say that's the worst thing that goes um, and the worst, worst thing that can happen to the car. Um, and the most expensive thing, I looked into it and you can pick up engines for like anywhere between say 300 to 500 pounds. Guys, what I'm gonna try and do, uh, what, no, I'll tell you what, rephrase that. What I am going to do uh, with this car is show you that everything can be done yourself. Everything can be done on your driveway. I'm trying to prove to you guys the fact that if you do have a small budget, if you do have um, a budget which restricts you um, to getting the work done elsewhere, um, you, you don't need to worry. This is gonna be a fully fledged car. By the way guys, this MX-5 is my daily as well. Um, I'm gonna be running this every single day. Um, so this is gonna be one of those 
not oh I've, I've got a uh, a daily and a show car sort of thing. This is literally going to be my everyday car. I'm going to drive this to work and home. Um, I'm going to commute in this to obviously, I don't know, places that I need to go. I'm going to use this as a, as, as, as a way of basically getting about and making me mobile. Sorry, I'm taking bumps right now. MX-5 is not good for bumps. Okay, so I found a quiet place to film. I don't think my battery is going to last too much longer, so I've got to make this fast. So um, basically, this is my 1.6 um, Mazda MX-5. Um, it is an import, so technically it is a Miata. Um, a lot of people might want to obviously quote me on that and say actually it's a Miata. So it's a Miata Unos uh, Roadster. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and everybody said get the import. Um, everybody said that the imports are better. Um, if I'm completely honest with you, wouldn't know the difference. The only time that I would know the difference is obviously the um, square plate at the back uh, which I like a lot more um, which I was very happy with now um, a lot of people might obviously hit me up and go why don't you get the 1.8 as well because they do 1.8 models too um, if I'm completely honest with you this was the first one that came up this was the one that looked the most promising um, it came with the hard top already on uh, which ideally I would want to be the same colour as the car whichever colour I do go let me run you round basically what I want to do to this car um, and where I want it to be so at the moment it is on um, springs so it is oh, that tire slightly going down um, at the moment it is on springs um, and it is a very bouncy ride so whenever I'm hitting speed bumps etc most of the time I'm scraping just due to the fact that um, it is actually just bouncing and hitting the bump rather than um, just naturally scraping on it I don't know how to put it I'm the guy before me whoever it may be I'm got a little bit happy with the red calipers um, it's not really what I would go for um, but yeah so these little uh, these are 6j uh, let me have a look yeah 15 inch 6j wheels um, alloy wheels which I will inevitably be changing I um, only just noticed that luckily enough they're all uh, there's no locking nuts on there either uh, which i will be changing obviously right now they sit way too far into the car um, and i'm looking to basically uh be a lot wider um this little spoiler on the back uh, will be going i don't like it um it, it's just not ready for me uh it's not what i want um it's a little bit of bird shit there uh but yeah that's not what i want so that will be going whether I go big gay wing or whether I keep it simple, I'm not too sure. Right now in my head, I'm thinking just a little, uh, I believe they're called ducktail wings, um, just to kind of bolt onto the back, purely because it's cheaper. It's a cheaper option. My favorite part of the car is obviously these little bug looking headlights. Um, I just think they make it. You get a little button inside, which allows you to go um, up and down on those. Now, if you know me, um, I'm massively into the technology side of things of the car. Um, I like a lot of um, wiring. Um, I like basically experimenting with stuff. Now, with these lights, I know that you can buy kits which make them wink. You can buy, obviously, the uh, headlight um, relays which make them alternately go up and down, which I would like to do, um, just so that I can have it winking at shows. Now, instead of be forking out for a £50 kit, personally would like to see if I can figure out how to make it do it myself. Um, maybe wire something in myself and hopefully save us a lot of money and once again spread the word on to you guys too little front splitters that you get which run underneath the car they look banging um i'm definitely gonna be having one of those only thing is um, i've only found um front splitter side skirts and rear for a good say like 150 pound or 100 pound each time um on things like ebay and stuff so if you can find me something cheaper or if somebody knows of anything cheaper hit us up in the comments below um, and make sure you tell us um a lot of people say oh, i really like the color the reason that i'm put off by it is because my mom's got a volkswagen up and it's exactly the same color uh, yeah we can't be having matching cars it's just odd we parked next to each other and i was just like oh oh my i didn't think of that now this is the best bit for me this is the funniest this is the funnest um section for me um, and this is what i think i'm gonna end up doing first if i'm honest cockpit of this car is, is amazing i absolutely love it um it's really comfy um the one thing that i was really happy about when i bought this car as well is the whole interior is pretty much mint like there's a couple of stains on the seats but there is no real tears in the upholstery the carpet's absolutely fine it just needs a hoover which i haven't done yet um, and it could do with maybe a little bit of a shampoo um something like that um only thing which i never thought of until i got a convertible car is in this one you don't get an interior light you get two interior lights down right here if you can see it 
which you can switch on and off. What I'm going to be doing is, this is this is going to be where a lot of people might not know what they're talking about. Potentially, a lot of people will do, but this is obviously the kind of mods that I'm into, which I absolutely love. I'm going to be robbing the power lines from those lights, and I'm going to be running um, a light up um, the top right here, so inside the the. the the A pillars and obviously up the top here, running all the wiring and just shoving it in, and um, running the interior light too. Um, don't get me wrong, it won't do it. Uh, it won't go with the doors opening, but I'll be able to just jump in, switch this little switch over, and it will turn all the lights on. Obviously, you can see my little headlights. My button right here gives you the option to go up and down. A lot of people mostly didn't realise that could happen, but trust me, like that literally that gave me fun for for hours. And it looks like something's missing. And I have looked at some MX-5 interiors online. Some of them have cup holders, some of them are just blanked out. I'm not sure what it's meant to be here, but this little hole right here, um, it's got a couple of little like uh, catch holes. I take it there might have been like a, from the indent here, I think it might have been maybe like a little lift up compartment bit. My phone doesn't quite fit in there because I've got the 7 Plus, so it's a bit awkward. It, it's, it's a bit of a pointless hole. So, what I notice is if I actually lay my phone right here, it sits pretty flush on top. So what I'm going to be doing, uh, which I've done previously, and it did work, I just never actually got it in, is I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a fiberglass insert. The second thing which I'm going to do, which I've been really lucky with with my cars, I think, at the moment, is um, iPad. Now, an iPad insert is is ideally what everybody, everybody kind of wants. Um, a lot of these double dins and a lot of these like pop out screens they're just not for me now i've got an ipad mini sitting indoors which i don't really use it's getting a bit slow it's getting a bit old um and i think i'm gonna put it in this car now let me just show you this this section right here obviously involves the little glove box which i put my phone in at the moment which once again is too big to actually let itself down and as well which as you can see let me shut this door as you can see is missing the little uh, the little front plate is my stereo so what i'm thinking of doing let me get this out of the way what i'm thinking of doing is, is getting another one of these tombstones and experimenting with it the ipad itself fits perfectly right here like as in this is pretty much the size of an ipad it runs slightly to the edges what i'm going to do is make a fiberglass insert once again i'm going to cut out the space which needs to be cut filler it Make sure that it sits in, make it all flush, and then maybe wrap it in like a suede or something, or like a leather, whichever's best. Um, and yeah, basically get that in there. So that'd be banging. This itself, I'll mostly reroute to the glove box, which is right here. Um, that actually fits right in there. Cut a hole the other side, run the wires from in here through to there. Um, and then what I will have is a fully fledged iPad sitting in my MX-5. The best bit about it is what I'm actually then thinking of doing is obviously just Bluetoothing up to this because this comes with Bluetooth and that's the most ideal way. Um, making it all, uh, I'll put kind of, um, I've got, let me just show you. I've got a cigarette lighter right here. I'll run power from the cigarette lighter, which is really, really dodgy, which I need to fix that. But I'll run power from the cigarette lighter. I'll run maybe the wire into here, somewhere where you can't see it, or I'll run it around the back. I'll run a secret... I don't know, like a, a, an enclosed USB um, holder or a USB input. So it'll be one of those where it goes from there. It will go to maybe say about three or four USB ports. That will be in the dashboard itself. That will be behind the center console. I'll hide that somewhere. I'll make the iPad have constant power. So the moment the engine goes on, the iPad's charged. Um, and then from there, I'll make sure it's on. I'll make sure it's not on permanent live as well, guys. So if you don't know these terms... Um, I'll obviously work this out in the video um, and then hopefully the iPad's gonna go in so that's that I think is pretty much one of the first mods that I'm gonna do um, like I said if you really do know me you're gonna know that I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to the kind of technology side of things um, I say technology I mean as in wire a soldering iron and, and some tape um, not ECU technology I like simple stuff uh, which you can modify yourself and that's what this bad boy is for yeah guys I hope you like the car um, don't throw any hairdresser jokes at me. I've heard them all already. Um, yes, I, I now officially cut hair. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, guys, like, I absolutely love this car. It gives me a very similar driving experience to the Mini. Um, just due to the fact that it's old, you feel the road, you can really, like, feel driving it. Um, and it's proper fun. Proper fun to drive. It's rear wheel, and if you just give it a little bit of power out of the corners, it does kind of kick the back end out, which is banging. Follow us on... Instagram if you don't already make sure you subscribe to the channel guys 
over the next couple of months, we're really going to be looking for subscribers on our channel. We're really going to be trying to hit it hard on YouTube, um, just because I feel that that's the way that we want to go. We want to start showing you videos on modifications, etc. And this is going to be the tester car and the first car to do it on, which I'm really excited for and I'm really happy for, um, and I look forward to doing it. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, hopefully, I'll be talking to you down below or in the future very, very soon. Um, yeah, peace, safe.